Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a locus problem with a max flavor. So we have the absolute value of z minus 3 minus 4i equals 5 and for which z values this is satisfied we're going to find the maximum value of the absolute value of z minus 10. So we're going to use a couple different things here. First of all, if you have the absolute value of z sub 1 minus z sub 2, this basically represents the distance between z sub 1 and z sub 2. So on the argon plane, basically, this gives you the distance between two complex numbers. If z sub 1 is 0, that is the origin, then you're talking about the distance between the complex number z sub 1 and the origin which is the same thing as modulus or the absolute value of that number. Now, what does the absolute value of z minus 10 mean then? It just means the distance between z and 10, 10 being the real number 10 comma 0 on the real axis. Make sense? So the first expression means the distance between z, and be careful here because you have to put the 3 plus 4i in parentheses so you're negating a sum and this means the distance between z and 3 plus 4i. And you want that distance to equal a constant, which means you want the distance between the 3 plus 4i, which is 3 comma 4, by the way, that's a fixed point, and z, and z is a variable. So you're basically talking about the set of numbers, points, that are the same distance from 3 comma 4, and that's a circle. Does that make sense? But we'll take a look at the picture later Let's go ahead and work this out a little bit. And this channel is called A plus BI, but I'm going to go ahead and replace Z with X plus Y. So forgive me, A plus BI. Just pretend that X is A and Y is B. So I'm kind of replacing X with A plus BI and then replacing A with X and B with Y. Make sense? Okay, kind of like a combo. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and write this as X plus YI minus Three. Actually, I could probably just remove the parentheses because I'm going to gather the real and imaginary parts anyways. And this is 5. Now put these two together, x minus 3, and put these two together, y minus 4. And you're going to see what I'm talking about. Notice that the absolute value of this number is the square root of x minus 3 squared plus y minus 4 squared. And that is actually equal to 5. I don't know how that 5 turned into a 4 mathematically. Focus, focus. And now if you square both sides, you're going to get our circle, right? Isn't this the equation of a circle with center at 3, 4 and radius 5? Make sense? Great. So we're going to look at this graphically, but that's basically what our equation is. And under these conditions for these x and y values, we want to know the maximum value of this. So let's go ahead and write down the absolute value of z minus 10, since z is x plus yi then basically we're getting into this and then by the same definition this is going to be the square root of x minus 10 squared plus y squared. So this might be a little hard without going into uh, you know the analytical geometry here but let's try to do a couple things. For example this is our expression. So x and y are bound by that rule and under that condition how do we maximize this? So it's kind of like an optimization problem, and you could probably use, is that Lagrange multipliers? Something like that. Uh, you could use differentiation, so on and so forth. But here's the thing. Obviously, geometric method is a lot better. But that's the idea. Make sense? So you can test out some values and get the solutions from there. But let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of this situ situation so that we get a better idea what is going on. Okay, so here's the graph, and the graph basically represents a circle, like I said earlier. This is a circle at centered at 3, 4 with a radius of 5. So in other words, it's going to go through the origin because this is 5, right, from Pythagorean theorem. And this is basically going to be 4, and this is going to be a 3. 3, 4, 5, you see that? Great. Now here's the idea. That's good to know because that's going to give me an idea about the slope of that line, which I can use. But here's the idea. I want to know the distance between this point and any point on the circle. And obviously, I want to max that distance, right? 
So how do you maximize the distance? So the points, the x comma y ordered pairs or z, right? Those are going to be on the circle. So any point on the circle represents z. But when you think about the distance between a point on the circle and this fixed point, right? You're basically getting closer as you're on this side, right? For example, this is the closest one. If they were asking for the minimum distance, this would be the answer. But since we're looking for the farthest point, it will be this one. You see that line goes through the center and point 10 comma zero. Make sense? So I got to find this distance and how do you evaluate that distance? That will be the answer. To be able to find that distance, here's what you can consider. This point is the center of the circle. Let's go ahead and erase this, clean it up a little bit so we can kind of focus on more important points. So this is my center and this is a point well known. So I can basically find the distance between these two points, right? By using the distance formula. This is three comma four. This is 10 comma zero. Obviously you can use the Pythagorean theorem as well. I kind of go down like this and the hypotenuse is gonna be made up of what? This is three. This is a four. Therefore, we have a height of four and the base is gonna be seven, as you can see, because from three to 10. Now the hypotenuse, let's call that H. Well, H is probably not a good uh, value, but let's just see. So now we have C squared equals four squared plus seven squared. And that will be 16 plus 49, which is 65. So C would be the square root of 65. Such a nice value. Pretty close to eight, don't you think? Because eight point something, right? But I am looking for the maximum distance between these two points. Therefore, I just need to add the radius, which is five. Therefore, the distance, the maximum distance I'm looking for is, actually, I already have that written here, C plus five. And that's going to be the square root of 65 plus five. And that will be the answer pretty much, makes sense? So we basically find two values here. One of them is the minimum, the other one is the maximum, but they're asking for the maximum value, so that will be the answer. Some people are gonna write this as five plus square root of 65, probably a little better way to write it, but that's basically what it is at this point, all right? And let me know if you know of any other method like using these algebraically, can you use Lagrange multipliers or any other method, maybe differentials or derivatives to find the maximum distance. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.